e kina lachtan ha chien trochel ka te hishin suas as ka vuh hapas jin e nau ni kishin e shah. We were given the illusion of a bridge, the last great bridge crossing. A small community can take on a huge international power. It wasn't about me or anybody else, it was about the cause. Invited by the government to form a parliamentary delegation and proceed to the Highlands of Scotland, there to investigate what can only be termed an outbreak of anarchy. Anarchy? Nothing less. I'll come to the details later. If you have 20 witnesses, you have 20 versions. And if you have 200 witnesses, you'll have 200 versions. And if you add to that the, the Celtic proclivity for elaboration, and in these long winter nights, these tales get milder and longer and more peculiar. I came illegal and the Nathan Halapa than Chakancho, I guess Trochachinil and Skiani had a Sklukohofical, their own and a statue meal for sight. And the first traffic will be able to pass over. The first of what I'm sure will be many successful journeys. She had Trochachinil and Skiani, his Savos Hegel Rialtas, her son Felchak and Schlier, the Erdley, and I get Privaja, her son Project and Popler. Can you check if you're in a quiche and a home to you with your I wonder how many people will turn out on a night like this. It was a typical East Sky, balmy sort of night. 80 mile an hour wind and driving rain. It's a wee bit like Burns' night when he describes Tam O'Shanta. It was a really horrible night. You'd be sitting there, all would go quiet, and then suddenly you'd hear coming travelling through the air the skirl of the pipes, and it would get closer and closer. Then when it got round the corner from the toll booth, you would see the mass of them all marching with their banners behind the pipers as they came down to the toll booth. The, the pipe band coming out of the kind of mist of rain, you know, and uh, I saw it afterwards, it was absolutely brilliant. Initially, we hadn't a clue what we were going to do. And we had about 30 cars, I think, and we thought we would just drive down to the bridge and just say we're not paying the tolls. Simple as that. And what we did, because it was absolutely howling, uh, was drove the pipe band across in our cars and then uh, emptied them out onto the road with about uh, two or three hundred yards to go. When we got there, of course, uh, the bridge manager was totally nonplussed by this arrival of these people saying they're not going to play the toll. They had no idea what to do. We had thought that we would be about an hour while they jazzed us, etc., and led us through. But they held us up, and they held us up for hours. There was a huge uh, uh, media waiting out there to find out what was going to be happening. It was all the cameras were filming. Uh, for, I believe, CNN were there. And, and the strategy was very quickly uh, worked out that we were going to cause as much a, of a problem to the establishment as, as was possible. There was a growing feeling that this was totally unfair, 
that the Highlands and Islands had been classified as being one of the poorest areas in Europe, yet here were going to be the highest British tolls in Europe. Most people didn't really understand what a PFI was. PFI is private uh, finance initiative. Or uh, private fingers in the public purse, I would see as it's a legitimised uh, scamming. A public-private sector partnership in which the public sector's uh, assistance has to be very limited. I saw it rather like I had seen higher purchase, where you could have things today and you never had to pay for them. That's rubbish. The civil service allowed the money lender to write his rules. Uh, simple as that. They're exploiting us because we had no other way to get off the island. And, uh, and that, that kept me going <laughs> through the whole campaign. We had no option but to pay the extortionate tolls or rebel against it. All right, Minister, you leave them to me. I'll talk some common sense into them. Because they understand English. Oh, indeed, sir. There's not much Gaelic left these days, though in other respects you may find them a little backward. Backward? They sound positively uncivilized. <laughs> started in a number of uh, different communities within Skye and people got together and talked and developed and met and it was rather like a, a mountain stream. Chaipuyan er a vel skat, Skye and Kyle against tolls, a chudir vaun a cunyaf an amposteri yn dde. Hat yist a chorlich yn ynyelain ar y chulwof, agos geta hat yra, na chil at a sonolog a vristig, ha at yra, gynyan at cyntiach gynnaid cysn y cysn a hord gw cwrslog. Myself and my wife have hit on the word scat, which um, of course has several connotations, meaning a scat clear off and a scat as in an excrement really. As hunik mir na neachkan, kran duinik kran nui nikishin ek drochich, kami na hunik shins, she shin mera hoshik misha kemers tanui nut kishin ek drochich. What we started with was raising 100 people, which is the defence quorum for the Kingdom of Scotland. And we had that 100 people within about 10 days. Well, at the early stage of the campaign, there was no official leadership because we were worried about conspiracy and people being picked out as the leaders. I am identifying myself now as Robbie the Pict and being from the SCAT operation. If you wanted to classify me in what kind of protester am I, I'm a situationist with a sense of humour. Robbie's the last of the, the last of the Picts, the last of the Mohicans, maybe they were both related. I thought, as many of us did, that he was a real gift from the gods. George Gregory Anderson, normally known as Andy Anderson. I was a coal miner for some years and a trade union official. When it comes to fighting for your rights, then you've got to push it as far as it can go. He had a solidity about him uh, and a kind of doggedness about him, which was really admirable. It's Mona Scotland Creek, press and publicity for SCAT. In the, in the first six months, I practically did everything paperwork, sending out press releases, etc., etc. I became an evangelical because um, the, the cause was all that I could see. I never could have done that myself as a person without that burning injustice about what they were doing and they were just not going to get away with it. Of Snahalapa 
Ik was een keer in kiezen, ja, er er thuis te bij. It's like getting religion. You suddenly have a voice. You do things that you wouldn't normally do. I'm not struggling. Be gentle with them, guys. Come on. I thought the protesters were a bunch of badly informed opportunists. Sky was the last great bridge crossing. The golden opportunity to build an almost monumental structure. Suppose I became obsessive about the whole thing. I was a, a regional director with uh, Miller's Civil Engineering. The challenge was, was phenomenal in terms of the, the setting, the, uh, the, the width of the crossing, uh, all of those had to be, to be solved um, in, in a, a bridge. Given the parameters for Sky, the bridge virtually designed itself. I did public exhibitions in Sky um, and I, I said to people that objected to the tolls, you know, take the bridge first of all, and if you can find some political way of having the tolls removed, then by all means do so. Hilda Kora Stajic at Pauta, Scott, the boy in the street, and the Kishin at Trochachile Lanskiana, Halart, go Emerchek, Kunjat, the Hobbit, the Warner Halapa, Strela, and Jew. Strainiat, the Taik will Val Palavat, Brian Wilson, come up for the Shakal Realtors, Halaja Sahatanoi, and Kishin. In that period, I was Labour transport spokesman in opposition. I, I, I took the view, um, all the way through, still do, that this was a a decision that had been taken without the consent of the people of Sky, and that that was a denial of democracy to the people of Sky, who were those most uh, directly affected by it. I was uh, the junior minister for environment. I had responsibility uh, for trunk roads, and I was aware that I think a century before there had been a rents rebellion on Sky. Uh, so I, I did know there had been a tradition for, of protest. He was very much on the back foot and a little bit frightened of what might happen. Uh, I met with uh, Robbie the Pict, who has a great uh, sense of humour, and I think two of his uh, colleagues. I told him that I believed that he was being grossly irresponsible, and a huge smile spread across his face. Whenever I pointed out that uh, the toll would be no more than the Calmac ferry fare, I always found that this went down like a lead balloon. Uh, and it seemed to me a perfectly legitimate uh, argument to put to them. Uh, and uh, I can only say that uh, they didn't seem to register very strongly on that point. A member of the, the press and asked what I thought of being called a, a Luddite. Initially I was impressed because I'd never heard of the word and certainly didn't know what it meant. I found out that it wasn't a compliment after all and it was uh, attributed to Lord James Douglas Hamilton. I used stronger language than I would normally have used and that was because I felt under some provocation he referred to us as Luddites, that we wouldn't accept the progress and toll bridges were the way forward. So we instantly disliked the man intensely. The question was, should there be a bridge with a toll or should there be no bridge? Seeing the place, in my opinion, doesn't justify elaborate and expensive public works and that's that. <laughs> I was a police officer in charge of the south of Skye. I had a very quiet life prior to the bridge. <laughs> Dealing with Scat was always a game of cat and mouse, but unfortunately from a policeman's point of view, we were always the mice, but uh, we could run fast. You would get an individual at say three or four or five o'clock in the morning. Fine time to start the day's work. The bridge would phone the police, the police would then phone whoever was on call. You would have to get up out of your bed, get dressed, go and get a police vehicle, go to the bridge 
attend to it. And sometimes that could happen twice or three times during the course of a night. Sometimes if I got a call that there was someone uh, waiting because they had refused to pay, I would just make them wait a wee bit more. Five pounds for this. To begin with, obviously, it was just, no, I won't pay. Thank you very much, sir. If you'd just like to pull over to the lane as well. Then it was collectively, no, we won't pay. It's very scary to to argue with the police and, and to, to, do a, a, to do a first non-payment. We all got charged, and that was the first charge that I've ever had in my life, apart from a parking fine. Civil action of the son, but a hello peg can the electricity bill like it, and you love dog and a criminal, a huge criminal. In a sense, it was like what we'd been complaining about for years in the Soviet Union. If you uh, challenge them, they'll make you a criminal. So this was serious. Now remember this: you've got to be in Lexdale by first light tomorrow and serve these summonses as early as you can. Get them into the proper hands, before people are out of their bed, if you like. Oh, it will spoil the day for them, poor souls. A court has to uphold the law, whatever that may mean. Once it got to court in Dingwall, it started to really take off. We went in in the party atmosphere. It was like um, going, say, to the Shinty Cup final, or, or going to your first pantomime. It was, it was excitement. There was buzz in the air. Pipe band were out in Dingwall High Street. Any fears that you had vanished because it was just a totally mind-blowing experience. We weren't interested in gumming up the works at the bridge, we'd rather gum up the court. Their stated intention was to, in fact, bring this court, Dingwall Sheriff Court, to its knees. That left me holding the baby with the bath water running out very rapidly. I mean, I was <laughs> The whole building was packed. And um, I remember uh, the, the clerk of the court saying, uh, uh, silence, silence, this is not the London Palladium. And immediately that exploded in laughter because many of us thought perhaps it was, you know. I was a smirk in a book of Hirstman David Hingston. He was a gentleman who was fairly uptight, uh, uh, fairly highly strung, and was determined to um, make sure that, uh, that we were brought to book. He took a very tough line. I was going to go fiscal hen with a fear bad evil. <laughs> I deliberately wore my rotary tie and my rotary badge that day because I knew he was a Rotarian. That was a waste of time, so I'd resigned later from the Rotary Club. I tended to wear comic cartoon ties, and I did that on, on many occasions. Not all, there were times when one had to be utterly solemn, but I do feel, as a fiscal, that it was necessary that people might think I was human as well. I felt rather sorry for him. Um, there they were landed in Dingwall Court with this unheard of group of people. What are we going to do with them? They were not the normal sort of people we get coming through the criminal court. Some people were quite brave, some were gallus, but the court experience can make grown men cry. <laughs> A mixture of afraid and angry and, and terrified, you know, that they would blot their copybook. Oh. So there had to be a degree of, of coaxing encouragement and uh, 
basically making sure that everyone was, was properly shepherded. Well, I think it's a kind of rutte kind of game where it mean streaks though. Uh when it's meaning it in war, he he she could a game against curse of reason. Ach yeah, hacker so yeah. Me up now. You know, we had 495 uh, different uh, charges laid against different people and we swamped them. We've got a slightly different campaign today in that uh, we're allowing people to express their discontent without necessarily refusing to pay the toll. Here we've just said, well, turn up, lengthen out the queue and, and uh, be as slow as you can, make your own protest your own way. They would come up and they would give you maybe 10 pennies then you count that out. Before they got to the full amount, they would maybe say they didn't have enough pennies, they wanted some back, and then give you a ten pence. Don't be a brat all your life, come on. It was making the lives of the toll collectors miserable. We were stuck between a, a rock and a hard place, as we'd say there. I'd like to issue an apology to those people who might remember me, of the uh, staff at the toll booths, because I wasn't often not very nice to them and mainly because I just wished that they could just down tools and say, we're not going to take tolls. That would have been the end, just like that. I think as time went on, they began to understand that uh, we didn't see them um, as the enemy at all. I think our initial enemy um, was the government, the Scottish office, The one card that the public can always play against authority is mockery. Imperialism and arrogance uh, fears mockery. And especially if you're right and it's true, it's a withering, crippling device. And I thought we used that quite well. <laughs> You have to get a balance between having a, a strictly legal agenda and entertaining the crowds. When the bridge for Sky was first thought about and negotiated by the civil servants, I think they were very cynical about it. And they were not concerned about the community that was there. It was uh, a new experience for the civil service uh, to get involved with the private sector in this way. Uh, we had a lot of learning to do. It's certainly true they had no experience of dealing with PFI. This was the first. But we're paying them large amounts of money to pay attention and they have a duty of care to the public. When we were in the office of 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 the I understand their resentment that there was not a free bridge, but uh, I was not in a position to provide a free bridge and had already incurred grave displeasure from the Treasury for having allocated six million pounds for the approach roads. The project was for uh, the consortia to design, construct, maintain and finance uh, the bridge in exchange for collecting tolls at the rate of the ferry fares for 20 years. Initially, of course, we didn't know what the price of the bridge was going to be and what it had cost, and we had to search to try and find out. And so we dug and dug and dug, and we wanted to throw up anything we could use, and we dug and we found a lot of things we could use. Now, children, we are going to do long division. I want you all to take down this sum. 
that it was going to be first around 10, then they upped it to 13 million. The public contribution had been upped from a supposed 6 to 14.6. There is a record of Bank of America introducing 19 million. So that's 47 million for an 11, 12, 13 million pound bridge. In 91, the till rang at 40 million pounds. It could have been built for half that price at 20 million. 25 million came from the PFI element of the bridge and 15 million pounds of government costs effectively. 15 million in subsidies from the government. I was absolutely livid. The biggest shock really was the extent of it all. Um, initially we thought we were dealing with a localised tiny issue. Once we realised that it was right across the whole of the UK, and then realised that it was in fact international. The Bank of America's role in the whole thing grew in importance. It emerged that they effectively owned the whole bridge, despite what the government said. They, they had shifted the shares round, the Bank of America held the shares. <laughs> Teach your young kids to love their neighbor as long as they're attractive. Eat, eat plenty hamburgers, drink plenty coke. It was just one of these carnival atmospheres that um, I think even the people collecting the tools enjoyed. They were the guys who were pockets were being lined at our expense. A gift to SCAT's campaign was at the very time when there were growing questions about the Bank of America's involvement in the States, they were subject to a billion dollars worth of litigation against them. This was a, a bank which may or may not have been corrupt, but the word corruption was used. People will know that banks especially do not like bad publicity and they were getting bad publicity. Without the Bank of America, this project would never have got built. I was part of the, a team that, that, that eventually put the whole deal together. Suppose I became obsessive about the whole thing. No, there wasn't a conspiracy. If there was, I think you're looking at the, the master conspirator. We trips around London for, uh, I, I suppose, well over a year, speaking to all the banks and various institutions about joining our team to build the bridge. Effectively, everyone I went to see politely turned me down. Um, large banks, boutique banks, we spoke to institutions, they, they insisted that the, the numbers that were being recorded on the ferries were the only figures that should be used um, and they resisted any forecast increase in traffic due to building a bridge. We spent a long time uh, trying to convince uh, the consortia that uh, they should uh, alter their figures. The government were trying to get us to include 15% uplift in, in the traffic numbers. Um, they and McBrain's knew there was extensive fiddling. For many, many years, local people didn't pay on the ferry. They just drove on and drove off and sometimes you would maybe give the ferryman a dram or maybe the price of a dram, which was much less than what the fare should have been. The fact that there was nothing done about it exacerbated our funding proposals. If doubt is brought into the system, the odds, if you like, of achieving a successful deal worsen. And if you are going to achieve it, then you're going to pay more for it. We were left with a situation where this project was looming large on the horizon and uh, we had no visible way of putting together the funding for it until one per chance meeting I was invited to lunch at a golf club one day and to meet some people from the Bank of America. Well if you're saying who had paid what and to whom 
you know, that is a, a thing of mystery. They've kept the, the actual deal private and confidential. The bridge would never have got built in 100 years had it not been built the way we wanted to build it and finance it the way we wanted to finance it. I didn't get on with the new chief executive and the solution to that was that I should leave. I was very sad. I was giving up, as I said, what, what was a large part of my life. Sky was still my baby. The thing that did annoy me was I didn't get invited to the opening after having spent so much time and so much energy on the project for it to be so petty as not to get invited to the opening. That's what saddened me the most. I've never been back to Sky since the day I left. I've never walked over it, joined up. I've been on lots of bits of it, but I've never been over it. It turned out to be quite a long campaign. I don't think we really expected that at the start. I have to say, I don't think we thought about that at all. We were just so angry about what we saw as a gross injustice being visited upon us that we just went with it. My favourite March was the one with the, the beer. I was to say that I was a very good time to get the extortion of the extortion. The extortion of the extortion of the extortion of the extortion. That to me that was the, the, one of the highlights to see all these casks being carried over on people's shoulders the whole length of the bridge. It was amazing the amount of uh, ingenuity and inventiveness that we had. I think all of our protests were geared to show how unjust it was, how unfair it was to us. She kees na trocha, she is na kees na hara, a humal er ade a volvog, the rumor of a foner can you never come him out. The strength of it was 4.6, which was in fact the price of a car crossing the, the bridge. Charles Kennedy was there, I remember, on that particular occasion. It was the Gallic for extortion. Now, there was a serious message behind that, of course, that the extortionate tools were crippling local industries. The first inclination uh, that there was something seriously wrong uh, was the morning after our first protest. Before we go any further with any demos or anything else at all, let's see if they have the paperwork in order to charge or collect tolls. They needed a toll order and they needed a, a tolling license and called an assignation statement. And it must be signed by the Secretary of State for Scotland or someone representing him. They're unable to produce this just now, but we've made this request very formally today and uh, the bridge manager assures us that he will further this uh, with the utmost urgency. Uh, he's prepared to use the phone. So we'll hope for some kind of response uh, within the next few hours. And eventually there was a chatter from the fax machine when we started to get the assignation statement through, the purported license. And then I looked at the last page and it just ended and there was no signature. There was no date, there was, there was nothing on it. Robbie certainly believed that that was a very crucial document. It was a flawed document. Fold up, stuck it in the jacket, and went back to Portree okay, going, the yeah, beauty, you know, we have won a watch, Rolex, Oyster, day and date. And the whole campaign was able to be based on that document's failings, and it still is. We are wanting to see the authority of this company for stopping us in the main highway to take toll. It must be signed by Ian Lang, Secretary of State. It is not. I signed the contract. I signed the development agreement uh, and many other documents. James and his deputy roads engineer. When did we elect him Secretary of State? Sorry, James, you must be a nice guy, but sorry, you're not the Secretary of State. Uh, my view was, and I was told, that uh, every time I signed an official document, I signed on behalf of the Secretary of State for Scotland. If you don't have proper authority, you commit a crime by demanding a toll. So all James Innes is doing is aiding and abetting illegal criminal extortion. That wasn't the situation. It had been signed, 
by a senior member of the Scottish Office uh, Department and uh, therefore it was perfectly legal and uh, it was proceeded with. So we now reach CP16, Crown Production number 16. Well, we were at Dingle Sheriff Court one day when there seemed to be a bit of a kerfuffle and great excitement. A courier arrived from Edinburgh, all hot and flustered, and delivered a document to the Procurator Fiscal just in the nick of time. A document that showed that the Skybridge Company had the right to charge the tolls. And the Procurator Fiscal was very excited by this, waving it around in the court before he went downstairs to tell us that we were doomed to the scaffolds. I said, I recognise this. This is cold from somewhere else. I've seen this before. It's the development agreement. It's, the, it's pages from the development agreement. Crown Production 16 seemed to have been several contracts kind of cobbled together. We managed to track down the lawyer who actually had, uh, had framed the document, who said it had absolutely nothing to do with tools. I think all of us were pretty stunned that the Crown were prepared to use such a, a document. I said, well, you know, this is grand because we'll take this uh, to appeal and by that time we can show where this document really came from. This is a fabrication of evidence. It has been suggested that CP16 is a paste job. I don't believe that. It is possible, of course. It is possible there's green men on Mars, for all I know. David Hingson was probably tearing his hair out by the end of the trials there. The pressure that was put on the man must have been unreal. The whole of the Skybridge protest was stressful on quite a number of people. I was one of them. PFI, in my personal opinion, is a fraud upon the public. It's an abuse of government. It simply was my job, my duty, to prosecute. That's what's involved. It's not for me, as a Procurator Fiscal or anybody else, to decide what laws are to be enforced and what laws are not to be enforced. I was the person to be seen to be doing things, to be seen to be the one taking decisions and, and insisting upon prosecutions, as was my duty, frankly. And therefore, this vast extra workload impinged significantly upon me and my own health, and probably contributed to my ultimate nervous breakdown. One of our sort of local boys, Brian Wilson, was one of the of uh, a person who was supportive of the campaign. Uh, I was asked to go to a meeting with Scott just before the 1997 uh, general election. There was Anderson, uh, there was Pict, or whatever he's called, and there was Gavin Scott Moncrief, who was a councillor. Our main purpose was to get him to uh, commit say, any incoming Labour government to remove the tolls off the Sky Bridge. I realised very quickly the nature of the meeting and, and the agenda which they were pursuing, which as I say wasn't any kind of rational debate about the bridge or about how the issue of tolls would be addressed. Ryan's reaction was, um, how should we put it, uh, certainly non-committal. Kincheku hik drech ur politikyonger awape inishe, sriotis natuche gilied et aharochig. I'm a smilk and dosh in the hur, the hur in the party labrach is dave, hurutunye, doi kwa, kunyak mihing, we kate the television, some of the awesome tolchig of the word at the stay new, ochblin jerky in the tories. Jenrut, a good thing to do in the car, Maraglois and do he could hear good in the hoof, Stahanski al the Unval Tory al Malapa and Asher. The Tory PFIs would be dead and buried, we understood. I guess we shouldn't be going to work or wouldn't have told the hackers because I shouldn't keep in the end of We actually had a truce when Labour won the election and we stopped campaigning on the bridge to give the, the new government the opportunity 
to tidy the thing up and get rid of the tools as we thought they would. I have heard of these delegations and members of Parliament coming to the Highlands before. They come and they promise to do things with smiling faces and then they go back to their Parliament and nothing is done. When it became evident, first, that they were dragging their heels, and secondly, that they weren't going to do away with the tolls, um, that there was deep disappointment. But what Labour did when we came in in 1997 was exactly in line with what we had, uh, had said was possible uh, and, was, and was fair and was realistic. It was quite clear that in opposition the Labour Party were supportive of the Sky Bridge campaign and, and removal of tolls and perhaps anti-PFI. Um, into power, they, I think instead of being friends, they became enemies overnight. The principle of using a private money to fund infrastructure that either wouldn't be built or would take many years uh, to build is absolutely sound as long as there's a way of paying for it. Uh, but they weren't interested in truth, they weren't interested in what had actually been said. All they were interested in was inventing and then sustaining their own mythology. We had a problem in that uh, the, uh, the other side would wear us down. We had been finding new people to challenge the tolls, but sooner or later we would run out and that time would run out for us. And the powerful weapon they had was to keep threatening people uh, with sending them to prison. And we had to force them to do that. Ha fer to look immerst trochich nir an stieh nich an se friesen. Skask de jolte noch kuk tilich se hoost. Ha Andy Anderson noch hor in greime reith. Se me chanje ben schur ei se wedding. Jolte jaltin ge noch ge se hoost wiest. Eges jolte kuchach ge karm sesr ener uras. He je chamal in greim ge schach an je mars te chien. The police arrived at the house. I think round about half past nine or something like that. I watched time I was in the ferry inn and my wife said, oh, he's down the ferry inn, you can get him down there. He's got his bike with him. Gonna... We would like a word with you. Well, speak up, man. We're all friends here. So we, matter of five summonses for the sheriff court. Well, in total, I did 11 days in Porterfield Prison uh, near Inverness. I think Andy, Andy being sent down uh, was a galvanising moment in the campaign. It, this, it showed this was going to be for the long haul. This, this was getting serious. When Andy Anderson got put to jail for those uh, crimes, as they called them, I think it was a total disgrace for something as trivial as refusing to pay a few pounds to cross a bridge. If that's what they call uh, justice in the eyes of the law, it's sadly lacking. Hur Andy Thor teichnet eigentlich eine Friesen, er kündigt mir hin, wenn wir in der nächsten Session so etwas Friesen, sonst ich kaufe ab Brieke Wallen, weil es der Friesen sucht schon Cake, Cake, hat er oder sie Cake, ich rutsch sie bei wie eine Sponge Cake, hat er schön an der Hochke, das Flur, das Eis in der Wohnung, hat er schön eine Ring, kann ich Black and Decker drillen, schön mal schön. He's a pretty thrown guy, you know, a pretty stubborn, stubborn guy, and. No matter what you think of him, you love him or you hate him, um, you have to admire somebody giving up his freedom to, uh, for any cause. Uh, you know, he gets a gold star for that in my book. The people who I had the misfortune to deal with were clearly coming at it from a, a very a political objective, and um, the, the egos were the, you know, the size of the coolants. And of course, thieves fall out and they duly fell out. The camp that the Anderson was in uh, moved, we're going to move, but uh, a vote of no confidence in ourselves. And uh, rather than waiting for, for anything to happen, we would, uh, we would actually make things happen. And we, we put forward that we were disbanding SCAT. I can remember sitting, looking. We were at a table, they were at a table opposite, and I think maybe Drew was in the chair. And uh, theatrically, they get up and they, they walk out, you know, and then we're sitting there looking, what, what, what's happening here? Drew said the meeting was closed. 
and that all meetings of SCAT would be closed until further notice. They had no such authority. Andy Anderson, uh, I think myself, was one of the catalysts for causing the split within the camp. He was a sort of person who um, I think had wanted to be a, a top dog in the campaign for whatever reason. Well, Andy uh, Anderson, I guess, Robbie depict that Harapu uh, in a noon love and a tall rutten. What was he a little yet in a cup it? A son of the Kishin Gang in a drawit. I had that objective very much in mind, and I was always looking for any means, any means that would achieve it. Hello again, Mr. Anderson. Uh, it's quite possible, and in fact, it's very likely that Robert the Pick had a different approach. Andy Anderson uh, was just a, a stubborn person who wasn't a team player. I didn't see him as being useful. Uh, he, he might have been useful f as uh, cannon fodder. They both felt a kind of ownership of the campaign that perhaps others didn't. Uh, even others that had been uh, with them from the start. I don't believe in compromise, General, never have. Either one fellow's right or the other. Two points of view can't both be right. It's one of life's tragedies that they can. I suppose, you know, a Robbie Vashon Geary could find in Mach, Nachron Kishin Logger, Gronachurgen, Ach, Andy Mismuth Kavashin, Jirgawa, Karakiri, Ginye, thrown the politics, he can occasion in a drachage. He wanted to play a political game, uh, but he'd come into an established greengrocer shop and wanted to be a butcher. I thought about Robbie, and I couldn't think of one where Robbie had been involved in the campaign which had been successful. So I put it to him. You say you're a good plumber, and you've mended all the taps in all the houses in this row. But they're all leaking. So, you know, that doesn't give me the impression that you're a good plumber. Well, Robbie, of course, didn't like that and wouldn't talk to me. I was so desperate to keep it all together, to keep us all moving in the same direction. We, we held them together for long enough, but we weren't able to hold it till the end. After all those years of together, togetherness, the split was not a good thing. Yes, it was, it was, a, ter it was a terrible night, terrible night. They never came back to Scott and they set up another organisation. That's what actually happened. I mean, it's like I know I spot in the Scott, I passed in the Gunya to Robbie, I guess I passed in the Gunya to Andy. People just all of a sudden ignored you. Um, I'm sure that nach Romeo Giori we got the intuition to be a machine. It's good me talking to Cunyavan. I don't think I ever talked to Robbie after that. And maybe I should have. I'm sorry about that, actually. But, well, it's in the past now. Well, the spark, sort of, that, had, that we had all shared had gone, like, you know. I suppose it was like when the Olympic torch goes out, you know, it's everything goes flat. Opinions are terrible. They are in direct uh, contradiction of the statutory provisions. When the Freedom of Information uh, Act came in and we, we saw the advice that was sent to the fiscal from the Crown Office in Edinburgh, it was absolutely clear that they knew that the assignation statement wasn't a complete document. How Lord Sutherland's judgment can, could still stand in the light of that, I, I personally don't understand. Lord Sutherland fabricated in his own mind a valid assignation statement that he had never seen and just said, that's valid and this one here doesn't matter. There's an element of futurity, he said, about these things. 
the element of futurity. That's a wonderful response. So a policeman stops you and says, where's your driving license? And you say, ah, there'll be an element of futurity about that, constable. Uh, I haven't quite got it yet, but I will have. You're just a bit early in my life, you know, for this driving license question. He does ask for trouble, doesn't he? He gets carried away by his own ideas, and that's his weakness. And maybe that was one of the problems as well, when, when there were uh, cracks appearing, that Robbie was defeating himself with the way he looked at, at, at things. It was going to take more than the actual split to actually stop the whole thing. And of course, it, that sort of turned out that, that the success was round the corner. Today is a historic day for Scotland. I'm a small bit of a hit came the high parliament to Hogan Nalapa. I guess I suppose going to the Russian come out first and grow Ian Ferrarol hack in him. Ian Ferrarol, a man of hug, a big mitilus, I guess fear, all the war on off, boundary, all yellow set. John Farkerman Rowe had uh, had uh, an important uh, role to play. No, there's no doubt about that. He kept pressing at doors, pre kept pressing, making sure that this issue didn't go. When I got to him, stay on a covandroch. In the party hill, she seen the lib names of his labors. Year me or if it changed me in the nutrition, crossing to learn nutrition and draw it. Ah, I know in Kelter, so she ate it. When I was transport minister in 2003, John was a, a really effective campaigner and he would use any opportunity he could to, uh, to stick it to the government on this issue or if we are getting answers, they're not the answers that uh, are doing anything to relieve the burden of the tolls on the bridge. Um, and then the work is and the the uh, and I hope that we will now move on to seize the opportunities that exist from a toll-free bridge to boost tourism, the economy and the quality of life in Skylock House and the whole surrounding area. It was part of the policy of the new government in 2003. That's why we got rid of tolls on the Sky Bridge. That was only thanks to all the work over the many years that the SCAT campaign had, had they kept it highlighted, kept it right in the front of the of the public issues on, on, on anything that was happening. The only way that we could get rid of the tolls was to compensate Skybridge Limited for the money that it ex expected to make in the future. And by this time it was making over four million pounds a year in tolls. The final price agreed on, the, the deal was sealed on 26.4 million pounds. There's no doubt the money to pay off the concession came from the roads budget. So other people lost, but Sky won. I don't think any sum that was paid by government would be unreasonable in terms of the monies that were due to the consortium for building the project. That company took out £33 million pounds of tolls in a very short space of time. That's a lot of money. 
to take out of a small community like Skye. There was at least 15 million in subsidies. The government buyout was an additional 26 million pounds. So for the 25 million, which allegedly the company raised, the PFI got a return of 74 million pounds. Sadly, nobody within the civil service was held responsible to that. The, the irony of the whole situation is, had they, the government, stuck with the tolling regime until now, the concession would have reverted back to them, free, gratis and for nothing. Yes, all along this embankment there are effectively stone structures that allow the otters to move from this side of the road to that side of the road. You can tell effectively if they're working by the amount of roadkill, and I don't believe there was a lot of roadkill, so the, you know, the otters must have been going somewhere. Walking over the bridge was a dream come true. I'm still quite emotional about the whole thing. This is my, my first time over the bridge. I've never been over it in its complete entity. Standing here is absolutely awe-inspiring. Um, the views are just, you know, just absolutely tremendous. It has to be said that the Sky Bridge protest succeeded. Had they not made a protest, we would still be paying to cross that bridge at whatever inflated rate Millers was demanding from the public. The idea that this was some kind of, you know, historic movement and it's just rubbish. Get the blood scat from a smoker or caught a cut in your view. But and numerous no occasion of a caldery scat or caught could be crucial because the hazard source also could be happy to no occasion as well. Can I give you a wee pamphlet here? It's about. The, the tolls and, and the problems we were having. The toll regime stopped, you know, but that's base camp at Everest. There's the rest of the mountain to climb. We want the convictions quashed. We want the money back. Basically, we're asking the Secretary of State to correct everything. Uh, it's, it's case closed for me. I'm victimised in the sense that I got a criminal conviction. But it's over for me, because as far as I'm concerned, I treat that criminal con conviction with contempt. If I hadn't been a police officer, I would probably have been a member of SCAT. I would probably have been down there protesting along with the rest of them. Every time I drive over that bridge, I say, wow, you know, we did this. We got the tolls taken off. Anyone just as a whimsy can go across the bridge. They don't need to pay anyone. And that's, that's I think that was for me and for everyone, we won. <laughs> I mean, what else we've won. Blown me free her shore.